Hey guys, I have here a little 1U server from Supermicro. This is the CSE813M. I purchased two of these about a month ago because they were super cheap and they came with the X10 SRI-F motherboard. I didn't need two of these servers at the time, but it was just too good of a deal to pass up. So I thought it'd be fun to see if we can turn one of these into a low-cost Chia plotting machine. This is something I've been wanting to do for a little while, but originally envisioned it being a DDR3-based system because DDR3 memory and the associated components are super cheap right now on the used market. However, the more time I spent looking through components, the more sense it made to go the DDR4 route instead of investing in older technology. Before we get into the build, please make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. I created this brand new channel for my server and hardware related content, and doing so will be a tremendous help in getting it launched. Alright, so I paid $175 for these servers. Like I said, I bought two of them at that price. Uh, and that was a steal of a deal for what we got here. We did get the original rails with it. Like I said, it's an X10 SRI-F motherboard. So we've got eight uh, DDR4 memory slots. We've got a single CPU. And we've got the CPU heatsink and an air baffle. Um, so it does have four high-speed fans on the CPU side. These two slots are empty. Uh, these are SAS or SATA bays, but they are run back to the motherboard with SATA cables. So I'm guessing... Uh, this is only going to support SATA drives in there as it sits currently. We can test out a SAS drive, see if it works, but I'm not expecting much. Then taking a look at the back, like I said, these are 400 watt power supplies. Uh, yeah, 400 watts and it's an 80 plus gold rated. All right, so first up is the CPU. This is the E5-2699V3. This is an 18 core, 36 thread CPU. It's got a base clock of 2.3 gigahertz with a turbo frequency of 3.6 gigahertz. This is a 145 watt processor. I've never installed a processor with that much power. Uh, so, you know, I don't even know if this 1U server is going to be able to cool it. So according to the Supermicro specifications, this X10 SRI motherboard does support up to 145 watt CPUs. I don't see any way this small 1U heatsink is going to handle that much power. Uh, but I also looked up this part number, SNK-P0047PS, on the Supermicro website. And this heatsink is also rated for 145 watts TDP. So I guess it's going to be completely up to how much airflow these fans are pushing through. And I imagine they're going to sound pretty loud in a 1U case. So this arm comes up first. Then we've got this arm on the side. This fits in just like this. There we go. Now I should say too that the reason why I picked out this particular CPU is I wanted as many cores as I can get with as high of a frequency as I can get without spending a boatload of money, right? So that's always the goal when you're building a performance computer. So uh, this, this CPU was $100 shipped with tax included and there were some V4s that went up, you know, slightly more cores, slightly less power, but you know, the more you went up in terms of core, the higher the price got. So this was really the best balance I can find in terms of number of cores. You could knock off a few cores and drop the price quite a bit. I've got four sticks of 16 gig. This is 2133 megahertz DDR4 memory. Um, somebody had actually posted a uh, link to this in the Digital Spaceport Discord channel. And it was like $18, $18 a stick, I think. So it was a pretty good deal. Once again, too good of a deal to pass up. Uh, so that'll give me 64 gigs of DDR4 memory. Uh, so because I'm only using four of the eight slots here, uh, these sticks will go in the blue slots. Now it's very important to make sure that none of these fins are bent here because every one of these fins that's bent is going to obstruct airflow from going through this heatsink. Uh, so I am making sure that anything that got bumped either through my own fault or you know from the person who uh, cleaned and sold this and decommissioned it. And then lastly we've got this little air shield which goes on something like this I believe here. And after a little bit of fighting with it, that airflow shield is now properly seated. So, so I picked up a pair of these Sabrent Rocket Plus. These are one terabyte NVMe drives. And these are pretty much top of the line right now for desktop grade components. These are advertised as 5300 megabytes per second write speed. Now, of course, you need a PCIe Gen 4 slot for that. And this motherboard only has Gen 3 slots. 
so that's not a problem on a Gen 3 slot. You should still see around 3,500 megabytes per second. Uh, so the plan is I'm going to take both of these drives and put them in a software RAID 0, which will stripe the data across the drives and should hopefully give me near double write performance. So to install these drives, I ordered these. I think they were also Sovereign brand uh, NVMe risers here. I thought these risers would be small enough to fit in a 1U chassis, but unfortunately when I put one in, it's about a half of an inch above the lip of the server. So I'm going to have to put the NVMe riser into the side uh, 90 degree slot here. And I still want to put two, I still want to put two of these in here. So here's what I came up with to solve this problem. So like I said, I've got two of these cases here. Um, so I just took the angle bracket from the other case since I'm not using it and won't be needing it. You only need four lanes, four PCIe lanes for these risers. It has all these pins on here. I don't know why they spent the time and money putting all those pins on there. So what I did was I lined this up here and then I just used a Dremel and carefully cut out the center of this X16 angle bracket. You can purchase on Amazon. You can purchase X8 angle brackets just like this. They're 11 bucks plus tax but I didn't see any reason to do that when I already had this part here that I wasn't going to use. Now I can take my second NVMe riser here and place it in like so. So there is two one terabyte NVMe drives. All right, so I've installed the drive into the riser here. And now once I put this aluminum shell on here, this entire shell will become the heat sink for these chips. All right, got one power supply in, power, network, monitor, lid. So I've got this super micro caddy here that's got a 2.5 inch adapter and I just put in an old SSD I have it. and the other three caddies in here are just empty. All right here we go. And it's starting up so I guess our hardware is good. Initializing IPMI so we're gonna go ahead and get the OS installed here and then we'll switch over to the console. All right switching over to the console here. Free dash M so you see we have 64 gigs of memory. So next we have to set up our NVMe drives. Okay so we do have them both there. So we'll do madatum slash slash create both MD0, level equals zero, raid devices two. And we're going to use, I think it's, I think it's this one and this one. We're gonna make an empty directory to mount this same. We'll just call it array. So we're gonna do mount and use our new raid zero and put it in MNT array, df-h, and we see we've got 1.8 terabytes, so. All right, so I've actually been plotting on the server for a couple of days now, and, uh, and I found the sweet spot with settings. So I'm using the Mad Max plotter. Um, I did try blade bit, and the blade bit disk just was not as fast as the Mad Max was. Um, I'm gonna do Chia plot K32. I've not done a K33 or 34 since the announcement of going to plot format 2.0. Uh, I see that as a waste of time at this point, since we'll most likely be replotting anyway. So dash N1, we want one plot to be created. We're going to use 34 threads. That leaves a bit of headroom since this is a 36 threaded CPU. Uh, dash U, 256 buckets. I did do a test with 128 buckets and 256 was still a hair faster. Our temp directory and our final directory is the same as our temp directory. We have our farmer key and we have our contract key, which are actually not real keys just for testing this. So on the left hand side here I have HTOP running and this is uh, cores 0 through 18 and cores uh, 19 through 36 in the right hand column. And on the bottom I have DSTAT just so we can watch particularly the disk IO and the disk uh, IO wait time. I forgot to mount the NVMe drive since I don't have that in FS tab yet. So rm-rf will delete what we just put there. So mount dev md0 mt array. Okay. Now we've got our NVMe array there. Let's just clear out what's left in it from before. And we're ready to go ahead and try that plot again. Now you can see the CPU ramping up on the left here and look at these write speeds here. 3000 megabytes a second, 2900 megabytes a second. So this is some pretty good throughput. Of course, it's not going to sustain that the entire time, but uh, those are some fantastic numbers. Again, this is two Sovereign uh, Rocket Pro 4 NVMEs in a software RAID 0. Uh, so phase one, table one took just 11.4 seconds. I did notice too that the CPU is being throttled down due to thermal. Uh, so if I check the temperature of the CPU here, 
So you see we're hovering around 2600 megahertz, 2700 megahertz. You know, this should be scaling up to 3600 megahertz, but the temperatures here, so if I do watch-n 0.5 sensors, you can see CPU temps are sitting around 90 degrees Celsius, and I have the high temperature set for 95 degrees Celsius, so it's going to try to maintain temperatures under that. I did take a variety of steps to try reducing the temperature, including, uh, you know, reseeding the heat sink with some better thermal paste, and, you know, I just haven't been able to get it down like I would like, so. I'm not seeing the full 3.6 gigahertz that I could optimally see, but I am very satisfied with the performance thus far. And after a couple of minutes of running, here's what the sound sounds like. It is very loud, but it's not screaming loud like I was expecting. Here's what it sounds like on the back side as well. Not too bad. But uh, all in all, I am very much loving the compact nature of this. It's just a flat pizza box case, a power cable, and a couple of network cables. I do have two one gig interfaces connected, and then I also have the IPMI connected, so I was able to get rid of the monitor and the keyboard and all that stuff. All right, guys, so our plot did finish here, you can see, and our plot time was 24.24 minutes. So that's, what, 24 minutes and about 20 seconds, about 15 seconds. I was expecting a slightly lower plot time, but I think temperature of the CPU is reducing performance a bit. There are 1440 minutes in a day divided by 25 minutes per plot is 50 times 101 gigabytes per plot is 5.8 terabytes of plots per day. That's a significant increase in capacity versus the way I was plotting before. All right, so all of the parts I purchased to assemble the server came to $625. I will leave links down in the video description to all of the components I ordered. All in all, I am very satisfied with the performance for the price we have paid. Um, I am going to look into the thermal cooling of the CPU a little bit. There was somebody who recommended to me to use a, was it a vapor? A vapor chamber heatsink. And the vapor chamber heatsink I found for a 1U chassis uh, goes up to 165 watts TDP. Um, so I did order one of those. It also has a copper base to it instead of all aluminum. So I'm going to install that heatsink in here and see if that helps reduce temperature a little bit. Otherwise, yeah, if there's anything else you guys want to see related to this server or chia plotting, please let me know. Uh, the next build video up will be a new storage array with some new disks. Um, so I'm looking forward to that as well. That is what this plotter is going to fill. Uh, so please hit that like button before you go, and thanks for watching.